is a new series, so I just wanted to hop on and give a quick little intro. I was brainstorming about this channel and it was watching Ryan Trahan's videos and when he had those odd conversations with people he met. And I was like, I want to intentionally have more meaningful conversations, but also I felt like I know a lot of people who have stories to tell that potentially are beneficial or can give advice that I wouldn't be able to give and I'm interested in hearing it, but also creating a space to share those intentional conversations and share those stories and just see if anyone wants to listen to them. I don't know exactly what this will evolve into, but this is the first one and I'm quite happy with it. It is made in a podcast sort of format, so there's minimal editing. With the view, you can just put it on in the background while you have a cuppa or are doing some housework. This is a really great conversation and I hope you benefit from it. You know what, we should have done this in the class, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I do have some personalised questions as well. The starting question, actually. Okay, go on. What's your name and what's your coffee order? Okay, so my name is Shannon. I am Hannah's cousin. And my coffee order is a mocha. Mm. I recently brought it out into coffee, you know? It's not too bad. Mm. Except Starbucks mockers. I'm sorry, I'm not brown. Tastes Woo! Like it tastes like, Shots <laughs> It tastes like cigarettes. Oh, but Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes are, I hate I to be cliche. But the Starbucks coffee I had yesterday, I asked the barista what to have and she made me this concoction. Don't know what it was. It was lots of ice, milk. It was like two shots of coffee with like caramel on top. Mm, like... I have a matcha with oat milk, which is actually so nice. Part of this was like inspired by this game. We're not really strangers. Highly recommend it, but it's questions and levels. I've handpicked a few from all of the levels, so you don't know what you're gonna get. So level one is perception, so it's like quite um, surface level questions. Okay. Level two is connection, so it's deeper, and then level three is reflection. Pick a card, any card. Okay, if we were in a band, what would our name be? <laughs> Shanna Nana Nana! <laughs> Shanna Nana. Our debut tour, 2023. Yeah. Coming soon to a stadium near you. <laughs> what kind of music would we make? I don't know. Batman theme tunes. Shanna Nana 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 Batman! <laughs> Imagine that though, a song with that as the sample. And it like, that's the build and then it goes boom boom. We joke, but I actually fear this Christmas I will get gifted a... <laughs> a Shannon and another mixtape. Yeah. I'll work on it. Okay, you hold them out and I'll pick one. And then we'll get to the questions later. As long as it's got Mr. Bright's on it though, I don't care. Also, okay. Okay. That's, that's all I care about. Classics. Good choice. Go on. Yeah, I know. Okay. What is the most unexplainable thing that has ever happened to you? Oh. I don't think if I have an answer for this, crazy. <laughs> okay, I guess it's to do with my net. Oh gosh, what is this? Let's turn all these back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we don't need some chair. Probably my nursing, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I never, so I actually always wanted to be a radiographer. Which is x rays. It is kind of x ray, CT imaging. Went to Cardiff for the open day with school sat through like one of the open day lectures and I was like, I can't do this, this is awful. Um, no respect, I absolutely love radiographers, I cannot do what they do. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, oh, I'll go, I'll go into nursing, be like my auntie. I got on this like course that's quite difficult to get onto and like only a couple of unis do it. And then literally like two years later, like really like progressing into like my career, really enjoying it. I'm just like, wow, it's amazing. Got an unexplainable. I didn't expect to be doing this, but I absolutely love what I do. It's great. It's always what you don't expect. It is. Do. It's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. I, I literally cannot think of anything. Like my mind's just going blank. Imagine like imagine being on like a first date and whipping out these cards. I mean, it's good. It's a good game. I recommend it. I don't know why I have to invest. Let me mull it over in my subconscious and we'll come back to it. Okay. Because I literally have nothing. I wanted to start with, because you're an A and E nurse. I am an A, yeah. Which is obviously a big job, and I'm always very impressed and proud. But why did you want to become a nurse? That's 
Good question. I like helping people. I can't say a really stupid answer, but yeah, I do. That's a good thing. I like supporting people when they're kind of in like some of the toughest places of their lives. Um, that's something really incredible and really special mm -hmm. um, that you get to witness throughout kind of the whole nursing career in general, whether you're a ward nurse. You work somewhere like kind of endoscopy, colonoscopy. Because people are still really anxious when they go, even for like mm. routine procedures. Like I've got family members who who go go for that stuff, and you know when I'm speaking to them before, like they get really anxious and really scared because it's not it's not pleasant, it's not nice. Mm. Even if you've done it like a thousand times, you don't know what you're expecting. Could it go wrong? You know, and it's really nice just to kind of comfort and support those people where they're at. I enjoy the diversity of nursing, so. If you haven't signed up to do a nursing course, this is your chance to sign up for a nursing course. You, it's so diverse, so you can work in a setting like A&E, you can work in GP practices, so the career options are endless. And say if you're a ward nurse, go into ward nursing, was a ward nurse for like a couple of years, go fancy a change, no reason why you can't just swap into another speciality. There's so many transferable skills, and even if unfortunately you're like, actually no, nah, nursing's not for me, so much kind of transferable skills but I really 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 wanted the job when I started of what I do now so I'm a trainee practitioner in ED and it's very I say it's very new to nursing it's in the sense of kind of last 10 years it's kind of fully developed and we're just kind of getting the foundations and like the underpinning not evidence but guidelines of what we can do what we can't do and it's more of a clinician type role than a standard traditional nursing role. And oh my word, I work in a minor injury setting at the minute and it is great. Like you are responsible for your own patient. You get to ask them what's happened. You get to order kind of things like x-rays or any imaging that they might need. And then do the treatment yourself. So say like if someone needs a splint, you just fit the splint yourself. Then you get to send them home and actually predominantly the only person that they see is you and you're responsible you can mm. tailor all of their care to what they need so much time spent oh i love it i feel like that must be easier as well than if you're like just coming in to do one treatment because you actually get to know them over the you do get to know them uh, yeah i found it very difficult um as a staff nurse in ed because you and it sounds horrific it was horrific i didn't like it because you I loved working in ED, but because of the high volume of people coming in, you didn't actually know pe the people very well mm. because you didn't have the time. And that sounds awful to say, I hate it, but you, you didn't. Yeah. You had like a to-do list of like three, I think three or four things, like three, 10 different things for three to five, sometimes even six patients. And you're kind of flittering between the two and up oh, flittering between everyone. And yeah, you don't have time and I hate to say it, but sometimes you don't, you would almost forget people as soon as they left. Mm. And that's horrific, but we were, you're just that busy, especially in the pandemic as well, which yeah, is yeah. Cool. And I like to get to know people, find out a bit about them, make them feel at ease. It just feels a lot more personal. And if I walked yeah. into an ED, that was how I would want to feel. I do think you suit a lot more being actually connected in with people rather than just having a to-do list. And I think there's probably people that would prefer having a to-do list or something, but it's actually an amazing thing. It's a big responsibility as well. It's a mental way yeah. That was a really long answer to your question, I'm sorry. No, it was good. <laughs> this is what, what I miss is having actual, not what I miss, what I feel mm. we lack sometimes is having actual meaningful conversations where we sit down with an intent to converse with someone and actually listen to what they've got to say and talk about what's going on in their life. Like, I love hearing you talk about it like that. And I'm like, she really loves this job and she really suits it. And it makes me, like, I'm already proud of you, but like, even more so. It's nice to be able to support people and actually understand, like, I always hate when people go, oh yeah, this is my job and they don't explain anything about it. I'm like, I wanna know what interests you about that job. Why do you mm -hmm. like that job? And it's different if you go somewhere else well, like I know, kind of, if you go to Australia, it's very much of a culture of you, work so you can live and in the UK we definitely have a live to work mm. culture which I think has its, pros, its own pros and cons but there are so many people unhappy and actually it's not about money no. you can do things very cheaply if you want to but 
that's like a whole different conversation how like a luxury way of living has become the normal okay. i have quite a big question for you <laughs> so uh, we don't need to go into work but i know that uni was tough yeah. for you a real tough time if you could say one thing or talk to yourself in first year yeah what would you want to what would i want to say what would you want to say to yourself probably find a good church and stay with it don't half-heartedly do it so i guess a little background background about me is that i was brought up in a christian home much like good old hannah over here um and there was a lot of things kind of as growing up a lot of kind of adverse events kind of happened um life didn't quite go how it naturally should have gone maybe or in the ideal world and i went to uni i was quite broken i knew that there was a god but i didn't really trust him anymore and i was like well at uni now i'll go to church on a sunday when every other Sunday, mum, if you're watching, just turn it off right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just kind of drifted away. I didn't really um, get connected in the church, which didn't help when I then sort of went through uni and like throughout uni, one of my best friends was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so we had that after that kind of first year, we then had that for a year to deal with and then she died um, in the third year. So it was all kind of like real doom and gloom and that was only one kind of story of, I guess, tragedy in the whole of our cohort, um, which wasn't very many people either. I think we started off with 12 and then we ended up with six by the end. It was awful. And yeah, I just didn't have kind of that solid foundation in life, so it was just really tough. And when things started to go wrong, like that's when I did like go back to church and I did try and like seek out God again. I knew there was a God and I was just like, you know what, I'm desperate now. And I think one of the mistakes I made was I went back into church, went every Sunday, I made some good Christian friends, but I was still actually an arsehole. <laughs> and maybe I, I can handwrite to say that I didn't treat them probably in the nicest of ways or as I should have done. And it was all very, very superficial. And then I got into a relationship which was was with another Christian, but actually the way that we were living outside of church to what we were like in church was completely different. And I'll hold my hands up to that. And that it was a good support work network at the time. I think I, I met him kind of in the last couple of weeks before, before, before my friend Amy died. So he was kind of, of support as well um, which is probably not the best as a basis to have built a relationship off of anyway but yeah if I think if I was kind of true and totally was running for God from the start I probably would have coped with uni a lot better instead of opting down kind of the party lifestyle which again comes with its own regrets mm -hmm. and yeah that would I think might be my advice because now like, like 10 months ago I probably started to go back into church kind of connect and actually long and seek this relationship that I've kind of gone and Jesus again and oh uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect by any stretch of the imagination because I'm really not um <laughs> but you know what it's like the best 10 months ever like I can just see like God working in it it's fantastic that would be that would be my advice is if you're Coming kind of from a Christian Christian home and you you go into uni, honestly, get yourself stuck into a good church. And if you're not Christian, try out a church. Oh, Give it a try. I'll plug that too. That's yeah. Actually, yeah it's I mean, because I, one, it was like watching all that's happened to you happen to you. Like every time, I, like my heart would break for you and it was just so hard to keep hearing about all this and like not being able to do anything and like the most I wanted to do was just like smash everything up and be like no no more leave her alone and it was really hard to watch and just like 
there's nothing you can do. Do you know what I mean? And it sucks. And I hate that you have to go through that. But what's amazing is how you cope with it now. Mm. I have a que- I have two questions off of what you said. I'm going to start with this one. Okay. What would you say, because I see a huge difference in you. Yeah. But what would you say is sort of a big difference you've noticed between how you live now mm. and how you live before? And actually was there, because sort of my relationship with God has been a very like steady, not like there's been ups and downs, but it's been pretty, like mm. there's not one turning point. Did you sort of feel you had one turning point that if you're willing to share? There's two questions in that, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, I think my relationship with God has been very mixed, um, very mixed bag. I was very kind of close to him at a young age. Then I went through kind of a difficult period, kind of through my early teens. Well, from probably about I was nine onwards, and I really struggled. And I really struggled with the fact that I think what made me lose faith was the fact that I would see like some people at church act one way on a Sunday and then act completely differently um, outside of church and I couldn't get it, it didn't make sense to me and I just lost faith. I was like, well, if this is all that it is, if this is all that it is, I'm like, mm, mm. I'm pretty, pretty done. Kind of like the turning point, I guess, realistically, it was probably about 10 months ago, um, I was dating someone who wasn't a Christian um, and I knew that and I kind of knew in my heart that it wasn't the right thing to do and I knew that he was not the one but I kind of went along with it anyway because I was bored and then you start and then you start to date someone you're like oh actually I like you mm. and there was like kind of like something like niggling um, that you're like let's go back to like go back to church just go start an alpha I also plug alpha as well love alpha <laughs> i went and i was like okay fine i'll go back to this this alpha course and kind of at the same time i did that the guy i was dating was like nah i think this is gonna work and obviously i think naturally you're upset because of rejection mm-hmm. but i was like actually this is this could this i think is for the best and you've actually just saved me having yeah. to end it with you so awesome and then we yeah i went and did alpha massive change in alpha that was when um, i kind of applied and was successful with this new job and i felt definitely this was where god wanted me to be did a lot of kind of bio, like kind of bible reading studies discussions with some of my friends who just encouraged me and then i guess it was kind of slowly slowly I was just less of, I guess, what Christianese would be, um, I've forgotten the word, oh, worldly things. I was about to say worldly things. It's the flesh. Sorry. I always get, um, sorry, sending a strip of flesh. <laughs> no. Very much side note. Do you remember those Doctor Who episodes with the little animals? Oh, uh, that like, scared me so, like the fat ones. Uh, <laughs> that freaked me out so much as a kid. Yeah, I don't know why. They were much more scary than the Daleks. These little fat ones. Yeah, it's the weeping angels for me. Oh! <laughs> With like rubble, like. <sighs> that was, yeah. You could um, not sleep after that episode. So, kind of like deep discussions, like a lot of where I kind of used to find my identity was getting dressed up, going going out, and oh, how many guys' numbers can you get at the bar? And that was my identity that was my life that is how I found myself worth and very slowly the more I kind of grew in my faith the more I stopped doing that and actually I didn't go out drinking so much still like getting dressed up Hannah will know me absolutely love the pair of heels I've always loved dressing up I think it's yeah I think some people get the wrong idea though yeah, but it's it's more why you do it. Like we genuine we genuinely enjoy it. I'm a creative. I enjoy dressing up because it's another aspect of being creative and stuff. No, but, but side note. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not even gonna say. <laughs> I remember. Kind of, we'll have to do a like a reflective. No, we are there. not. We're not putting photo evidence in their hands. Hannah, when she was oh, I don't know in her early teens. I think we decided her outfit choice was very bold. 
Do you know what? Strong and wrong. And wrong. <laughs> I knew I wanted to wear it and I wore it no matter what anyone thought. I did love your side ponytail though. <laughs> it was like, it was the hat, the like Michael Jackson. I had this like sequin oh, fedora that I wore everywhere, like everywhere. It was so bad. And I dressed up as Michael Jackson once for a sponsored skate. Did you ever see that? And I clipped my like hair up so I had this like bob. And I had the one lace and the hat and stuff. I did not see that. Oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> so that's where I kind of noticed it. So I think like you, and I'm still growing. So it's kind of like an element of grace. Of, I think people have this, like I have been, I have, I have been a Christian for a very long time. Mm. And in some ways that is true. But also, I'm very new to this kind of new faith journey with mm. God of actually true living it out. So I don't get it right all the time at all. And I'm sure if you meet me, you will soon find that out. But, you know, I'm growing more and more each day. I'm learning. It's like it's like being a child again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. like you're learning kind of what's, what's right, what's wrong. Actually, what's the right way to live your life? What's actually not so good for you? Um, so it's all like a big like learning process and a journey. You're not yeah. going to get from the start to the finish um, straight away. And I think that journey has kind of good days, bad days, there's sometimes where you'll feel really, really close to God and sometimes where you feel quite distant. Mm. Sometimes I get freaked out about that. I'm like, oh my God, am I doing it right? And, like, mm. and I think that's quite a toxic. I think it's good to challenge yourself where you are. It's remembering it'll... God's grace is doing yes. And it's also happens. we were, in our life group, we've been talking a lot about actually Mm. What we get caught up in, these are the good things to do and stuff, but you can't earn anything by your works, and actually that you have to stay humble. And it's, yeah, accepting that you just you need help to do any of it, and you can't you can't just do it by your own. And it's interesting you saying about how like you saw people acting one way at church and then not, and that kind of mm. put you off faith because I think there's a huge problem of that, and also like a huge misconception in society at the minute that it's like all these rules and like these people that actually d uh, say we should love one another and then don't act in a loving way and all this stuff i think that's very true and i think it's worrying how much it happens and it's actually sad and it's another reason to have these conversations and actually be like you're not like it really doesn't matter who you are where you come from what you've done like you're welcome and there are some churches out there that unfortunately aren't doing what they should be doing but if you can find one that's a community like it really is just like extended family and it's something you don't feel anywhere else and like I would want everyone to feel that support and stuff and now I'm so glad that you're like actually in it do you think that is why because you're a huge fan of the book not found Oh, I love not a fan. I ask why you love it, because to me, with you like sharing that, it would be actually that speaks a lot about that and sort of helps you understand. I think I finished reading it. it must have been because it was around Emily's birthday. It must have been about since January, February time. Mm. And oh, it just I got the book a couple of years ago. So our granddad um, lent it to me and was like, "This book's great." And so I was like, oh my word, this is going to be another boring granny book, let's be <laughs> honest. I love my our granny to pieces, but she can be on the old fashioned yeah. sense. And I think she's given me books before and they look like they've actually been written in the early <laughs> 1900s. Actually, it was really good because my mum read it as well. And she was like, oh my word, it calls out so much of this kind of Stereotypical, well, stereotypical behaviour in churches where they go on a Sunday, go, oh, love you, Lord, and then Monday to Saturday they live completely differently. And actually, the idea and the concept of are you a fan of Jesus and everything that he can do for you, or do you actually know Jesus like you know, like a friend? It's like, for example, I'm going to throw this one on because I know Hannah absolutely adores him. <laughs> Here we go. Like Harry Styles. Woohoo! For example, like there are a lot of people who are fans of Harry. Like they know his birthday, they know where he's from, they know his outfit choice, they know his favourite food, I'm sure. I have no idea. <laughs> You're not Reagan Harry Styles. No, I'm not. <laughs> I like the music, that's as far um, as I go. Like, and 
they are true fans. They know everything mm. about him, but they don't actually know him. And it's basically calling out, actually, are you a fan of Jesus or do you actually know who Jesus mm. is? Do you have a relationship with him? Does he know you? Do you know him? And I was like, oh, like, right. Like, I think I used to live in the fan camp very strongly of going, look at Jesus, he can forgive me, which he, he can. Like, he can do all this good stuff, but did I actually know Jesus? Probably not. Mm. And I am trying to kind of grow in a way that I move kind of from this fan camp to an actual follower mm. of getting to know him, building that relationship with him. And it's like a, fr it's like a friendship, isn't it? Like, mm. it doesn't happen overnight you get things wrong mm. and you know but he does still love you he does still want the best for you and he wants to have that relationship with you he will meet you where you're at which is mm. great <laughs> to be honest he has kind of a unique and individual relationship with, with everyone who kind of comes to him and that is just incredible in, in itself to be honest yeah. like i sat on the tube yesterday I had like a thought of like, oh my gosh, like you love every single one of these people in this tube and equally, equally, you have made them each individually and you know them each by name. There are a lot of and people not on even by name, each hair on their head. I know. That's the verse that always blows my mind. It's like, oh, I've got so many hairs on my head, like yeah. that's a lot. And I was just like sat there because it was in the morning, it was like fairly busy for going to London and I was just like, oh my word. I was just getting like in my head like, this is incredible and how, like, how incredible and I just think I always think it's a shame nowadays that like it's with Love Island and I personally can't stand watching it anymore mm. and I like get why people enjoy it and stuff but it just irritates me because these relationships are so fake and superficial mm. but you know that everyone's looking for this like real connection and they like feel the need for this and I'm like Jesus can do that. <laughs> like, simply, it is like the amount of peace I feel like, mm. and you need it in today's world. Like, everyone's so loud and makes so much noise without saying anything. And oh, uh, but yeah, it is mental that like everyone's looking for it, but no one wants to admit. Mm. But I know I am a secret Love Island fan. I just I like watching people's dynamics mm. and. I think the more the seasons go on, I feel the more it becomes evident and it just makes me sad of how there are some, I do believe there are some people on there who probably are looking for a genuine relationship mm. and do want that and do want to find love. And then you've got some people who maybe are purely on it just for the fame, just to get advertisement, just to get the brands at the end. And you know, I could be completely wrong, I don't know anyone. Like I don't know anyone from that yeah. but I do find it interesting how there it's never like an exclusive you know what I really like you I'm gonna get to know you and that is gonna be my priority and if it doesn't work out like that's cool we've known each other for like a week like it's okay then we can find someone else and actually have the respect for people to do that instead of this like going behind each other's backs oh, mm. I'm speaking to this person, this person, this person and I'm just sat there and I'm a bit like you're taking the, almost taking the best of these three people and you know creating almost your own person yeah. that doesn't actually exist and you don't find your needs just in a person because you've got three mm. And you know what, I know this is a thing because I used to do it, like, I used to have, speak to many people and it's like, oh yeah, but I like this one because he's really funny, oh, he's really sensitive, I can go to him after a bad day and he'll make me feel better, oh, this person is really adventurous, pushes me, this person likes going to the gym, so I'll motivate myself by going to the gym because he goes to the gym. Do you know what I mean? And it's never having the respect to go, actually, I shouldn't really be speaking to her for, I don't know. This is just, again, my own beliefs, like people may differ and that's fine. I would rather 
take now, get to know one person and almost give my whole time to them. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Like it's not, the sky isn't gonna fall down, mm -hmm. but actually you're not comparing them against each other. You're not being deceitful. Cause I mean, I've done it before where I've met up with one guy and I've got a date with the next, another person the next day. And I've not lied, but it's been like, I've been like, oh yeah, I'm meeting a friend. Like, and it's just, I don't wanna be like that. Like that's not, that's not helpful. That's not, it builds up insecurity in mm. people. And nah, I'm not about that much. So I have one question that I wanna get back to at the end cause it's not related to this. And actually I wanted to ask you about dating Anyway, and we've naturally gravitated towards it. I find modern dating so stressful. In fact, I don't, I would say I don't date. Yeah. Because like, I just find it so <laughs> stressful. I cannot handle online dating. I get so, like everyone's little like talking and like, does this mean you're exclusive and not in all these levels? And I'm like, I don't oh, know. Don't it stresses me out. I don't want to be a part mm -hmm. of it. I haven't been a part of it and like it's just it's not for me mm. you however are uh, <laughs> no 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 not as in as in i'm happy for you because it's it's like you how do i explain this i'm not good at it because like it stresses me out and yeah. it's just not how i want to meet someone and stuff yeah but you're a different person and that's why it can work for you and like you'd be fine with it and stuff i wouldn't say it was <laughs> Well, no, but it but yeah. it means you've got useful advice okay. that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. I literally just wrote advice for dating. Advice for dating. Just like, like, what would you? <laughs> what would you? What are your thoughts on dating nowadays? Because also, there's the I'm quite glad that you've made like being Christian a priority. Yeah. And I know some people would see that as from externally. I feel like some people would be like, why do you only want to date women Christians and stuff mm. and like this and that? But it's so important, like I've learned how important it is that actually because our views are based on our faith and our mm. faith should be like a big interference in our lives in a way, if that makes sense. Like it should create our priorities and our mm. views and stuff. That actually, yeah, if you're trying to date someone that has opposing views, yeah opposites attract and all that like it's good to have some differences but when your fundamentals are different it's gonna create issues down the line like it's this thing of like actually hypothetically if like you married someone and then you had kids and actually you wanted to take them to church and that person was like no i don't want them yeah. to put, like it just causes issues that you don't need to have so i'm very glad you like to say that and that's just like an, a slight explanation as to why I, christians tend to date women christians yeah of course for everyone else just as a like honest thing the other thing i always think about is the comparison aspect mm -hmm. in that which is what you were saying with when you're meeting someone and then like you've got another date the next day and actually you feel awkward telling them because then it creates all these insecurities because you're thinking well is she going to enjoy that date more and actually you're thinking are they bothered if i see someone tomorrow yeah. and it's all these complex things and like i remember one of the talks that stuck with me most was about comparison and actually you whoever your future spouse turns out to be like you don't want to create that pressure for them and those issues of like them freaking out about like is this person and da 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 I don't know why, I feel like none of that makes sense after I asked the question. But yeah, what's your... Dating advice. Dating advice for people nowadays, what would you... I think this is really difficult. Uh, it's definitely something like I've wrestled with in kind of the past, I guess, year or so. So before my ex, when I was at uni, wasn't exactly going God's way. I of course had Tinder and Bumble, though I think it were the main two at the time. I know there's now like many, many more. I just found it really toxic because you're literally like swiping and swiping. You don't spend like more than five seconds on a profile unless it kind of catches your eye. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't spend more than a minute on it. I think you don't, what's really difficult, I think, especially after the pandemic, is that you don't meet really people outside mm -hmm. anymore. And I think it's really difficult to meet people at church because you want to get to know people as friends, but then you're like, 
how do I tell them that I like them yeah. and not tell them that I like, like not be so obvious about it. And you get guys trying to, there's like an old joke, if you are a Christian or know any Christians, they will be able to vouch for this. So when it was little, it was how many chairs you could hold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh, it's three, three, ta- like three chairs. It's like, oh, yeah. wow. That one is the catch. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, he's the one we're all going for. Though. There's someone walking past with Ted and you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> wow. I think the pandemic has made it harder. And I think the best dating advice, get, sorry, I've like switched on. My, my mind goes from like A to C and I miss out B completely, but we're just gonna roll it and you can- It's about having real conversations. You can edit your real conversations. And editing is king. I think my best advice has actually come from my dad and he basically said, and I think this kind of works for everyone. There's kind of three main kind of foundations. Are you spiritually on the same level? Yeah. So part of that, like for me, I'm a Christian and I know it's very kind of clear in the Bible of the fact that actually God's ideal for you is for you to marry someone who is of the same faith as you yeah. and worships the same God as yeah. you. And but equally, we just had a talk on um, in Malachi, and God wants. That it was a very difficult talk, and I'm not even going to go like fully into it because I cannot do it justice. Um, but it was kind of the idea that, say, you got married ages and years ago, you're a Christian, and your partner's not. Actually, instead of just walking away, going, "Well, he's not a Christian, I'm done." God actually wants you to work on that. Yeah, and show his yeah. love to your partner through that mm-hmm. and rather than just walk away and I was like there's a huge because it's based in the equally yoked verse in that yeah. you should tie someone that's equally yoked which yoking is like they used to yoke two cattle together that were kind of I didn't know it was like, I think it was egg oh <laughs> um, no so they would have like I think it was two oxen whatever mm-hmm. and you'd want them to be equal because if one pulled they wouldn't be able to plow as effectively and it's but it's also I think it's not just, oh, I'm at this place with God and he's at this place with God, so yeah, we're going to match. It's actually, are you going to encourage each other in your faith and actually like journey together in your mm-hmm. faith more than are you in exactly the same spot? Because you don't want to go in exactly the same spot and then just stay in the same spot like you should always be. So it is, it is yeah. And also you have people that find faith later in life. Like there's loads of people I know that like, they found faith and then actually their their partner hasn't yet but actually over years of praying and stuff and the partner sees the difference and actually they become interested and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so i think you're right in that it's not a instruction to walk away yeah but it is a sort of be aware of if you're because it, it creates tension and issues and stuff so it's yeah that was my first point one is spiritual on the same page and for me, personally, that looks like someone, are they Christian? Yeah, cool. Then, actually, what I want, kind of from a, a spiritual relate, like a spiritual aspect of someone, is are they gonna challenge me? Are they gonna sit down, get the Bible out with me? Say, after Sunday's talk, we're gonna test what they've said. Is it actually mm. the Bible? Do we agree? And encourage each other through prayer, through Bible reading, through daily life. To grow closer to God, and actually, if they don't have that desire, again, I'll use the example myself. That's not they're not spiritually on the same level as me because I want that, and I would expect them to want that as well. Mm-hmm. And I've had many comments from people outside of Christian faith who go, "Oh my word, do you know I date a Christian? Oh gosh, your pool's like gone from like this big to like this big." And I was like, "Yeah." Just wait until like I actually want to sit down and read the Bible with them. And mm. pray with them. And it goes like from like this big like to this big. And then physically, like, are they physically attracted to you? Uh, is vice versa? Like, you can't, you know, one day you're gonna be intimate with them. They've got to have that level of physical mm. attraction to you, and that can look different for everyone. Everyone's got like yeah. different types and everything like yeah. that. I think mean, it's people always love to push that point that looks don't matter and stuff and it's like well in the sense that society pushes it of like this is the look you have to be Mm. no but actually yeah physical attraction is important but it also shouldn't be the base because you're not gonna Mm. it's that thing of actually being friends with your 
significant other as well because you're not gonna want to be with them every day but you need to uh, does that make sense you choose to love them you choose to love them every day and it's that thing of yeah you might not necessarily like them every day because you're going to have disagreements or you're going to have an off day or whatever but actually yeah you're you're friends with them and Mm. there's a base that isn't on this physical attraction and like chemical thing that can fluctuate yeah yeah and then you've got the emotional side as well are you emotionally on the same page are you emotionally compatible? For example, I don't get on very well with people shouting at me. If people shout at me, mm. I'm gonna get my back up and probably shout back, let's be honest. And I will get feisty, I will get sassy, and I know that if someone puts me to this point of kind of being angry, I will just lose it. Not lose it in the sense I won't go crashing around, but I will say things I don't mean, like everyone, and I need to find someone who is compatible to the fact that when I've kind of fired the warning shot of going, you're annoying me now, like, please stop. They take that shot and like, okay, I'll leave you just to cool down for half an hour. Because after half an hour, I can have a reasonable conversation with people. It's that initial mm. kind of 20 minutes where I'm just like, I need just some space, I need to think through, maybe phone up my mum or phone up Hannah in here, have a little bit of a vent, and then I'll be okay and you know, I can have a rational conversation. And it's also like where the relationship's heading as well. So I have no intention to date because I'm bored. I mm-hmm. want to date the end goal of marriage. And you know, that's to anyone kind of again, outside the Christian realm, that sounds a very scary thing mm. to do. And admittedly it is. Like, it's kind of like, oh, like, but it's not to put the pressure on to start with, but it's kind of like that is in the back of your mind because actually I don't want to waste my time like ultimately you're in a relationship you're either gonna get get together and get married or you're gonna break up yeah and actually why would you want to carry on a relationship that isn't gonna Mm. carry on so and I think as well like again emotionally is do you get on like do you fundamentally get on do you have fun together do you have similar interests you have to be the same person yeah my dad was like you need all three ticks in all three because it's a I have dated people who are I find physically attractive, I get on really well with, I have really good fun with, are good people. It's like the like the guy I dated, he was really not he, he wasn't a Christian, but he was so lovely. I cannot say a bad word about him at all. But actually we didn't have all the all the three. Yeah. So it was never gonna work. And it's it's not that there's a problem with either no. of you, it's just that you're no. not a fit, which is fine. Which is okay. And you know what? He found someone else. I'm so happy for him. Like yeah. there is no bitterness, like you kind of know well it's not gonna work. Like that's mm. fine. I'm just gonna yeah. move on, like move on. Yeah. It's interesting you say it coming from your dad. One thing that stuck with me is my mum said Mr. Right, not Mr. Right now. And actually, yeah. I did need a shift in perspective at one point in my life. Like, there was a period where it was like, I looked at every guy around me and I was like, which one do I want to date? And like, I want to date someone, so like, this is yeah. the pool and which one. Whereas now, I've been single what, three, four years consistently with like, not even like a little. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm content because I'm like, well, I haven't met anyone I want to date. And I'm not just going to date someone for the sake of dating mm-hmm. someone. I'm going to wait until I meet someone and I'm like, I really like you for you. Like, it's a very different um, thing. But yeah, I like that. That three makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm just shocked it came from my dad, to be honest. <laughs> but you know, he's what? got some wise words in him. Not very many words. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like a Cadbury's caramel. He's mm-hmm. really kind of like tough on the interior oh that's such a sweet metaphor i've never heard that metaphor that's so sweet okay there's one last like heavy okay go on on. which is actually i'm just going to check this rolling (laughs) because okay this is something that isn't i feel like isn't talked about but would really help people if we talked about okay go on but if you don't want to talk about this that's fine okay we touched on your friends yeah. getting cancer and yeah. dying. I haven't even like witnessed losing my grandparents yet and it's something I'd like to get off. Okay. But obviously a friend is I don't want to say it's harder but it's different as well. But like mm. 
what is how i don't know how to phrase this question but just like what would you want to say to people that might be going through that like dealing with grief both as quite a young person but also when it's like a friend and stuff and like it's quite sudden and you know it's not expected mm -hmm. and just like what i don't know if it's advice or just something you'd want to tell them or like mm -hmm. how is there a way like it's it's just something you can't even imagine but yeah i think it's a grief is different for everyone and i think everyone handles it very differently and depending on your scenario you could be say if for example with my friend it's a it was a terminal cancer diagnosis and we were kind of living in grief for about a year before she passed away and that's really difficult because they're still there but you're almost like holding on to everything because they're not going to be there forever. I think it's making the most of the time that you have and even like when it comes to stuff like grandparents like even if they're not unwell now they're not going to be around forever and you know you would be naive to think that they would be unless Jesus decides to come back tomorrow. <laughs> like we'd love that <laughs> party time sorry so serious. like serious yeah and i think it's really making the most of kind of any opportunity with people and giving them quality time so whether that is like you're passing by your grandparents house and you pop in a surprise mm -hmm. for coffee you know you do those little things and i think i remember with my friend it must have been kind of in the last kind of month six weeks of her life I used to send her these really cheesy texts every single day and it was what it was like do you remember at school when it was like what went well even better if it would be the best thing of the day the worst thing of the day and something funny that happened in the day i love that yeah just as a general like that's yeah. so such a good way to stay yeah. in touch with someone and almost every day without fail um she got those texts and she definitely sometimes she didn't reply so she was going through quite intense chemo and i remember her messaging me one day being like i love these texts please carry it on but actually i physically can't reply mm. and i was like that's fine if it's making you happy put a smile on your face even if it's just for a minute or 30 seconds just to break you know she was in hospital stuck at home she couldn't kind of get out and about anymore and i was just like you know what it's not living your life through other people, but it, you know, it's that a level of friendship of, oh my God, that's hilarious. Okay, that's really annoying. We just lost some really good content, but Very we sorry. benefited from the conversation. Yeah, we did. And I'm sorry you missed out on it because there was some useful stuff in there, but um, we're going to finish it off with one of these and then I have like a final question for you. So, talk to Nelia. Let me just check. Please subscribe. I need to get better equipment. <laughs> We need the money. Pick a, pick a card, any card. Sounds like a magic trick. I know. Oh, we would have that one. Oh, as in. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Quick. If you could have, you can't nick my answer. If you could have it your way, who would you be with? Where would you be? And what would you be doing? It'd be us and Emily. Yeah. I think at the concert tonight. But maybe we get to like go backstage <laughs> and meet Harry. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best to fall down the stairs and hurt my Thank ankle you. so that we can go Thank meet you. Harry at backstage. Thank you. I appreciate your effort. What's <laughs> yours? So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is a good one. So we went on to Cornwall last summer, and there's like this little like cozy bit. I think it's like St Agnes. Mm. It's like St Agnes. And you have to get there by you get there by car, and then you've got to walk down like a slope. Hannah's dad, uh, Roland, uh, nearly crashed the car. This like the gap was like this big, and that's probably not very helpful. He was like this close from crashing the car. It was quite funny. And there were these like, amazing pizza place. I always forget what it's called. Um, um, Cornish Pizza Company, best pizza ever. Oh, I had one called Alfred, and I actually used to, at the time I had Christian Tinder. I had it as one of my display pictures, and actually someone messaged me going, oh, um. Why is that Alfred written on your book? Um, so your name's Alfred, actually. Yeah, my name's Alfred. <gasps> that would make you. Um, oh no. Is Alfred Batman spelled or is it Albert? I'm sure it's it Alfred. It's Alfred. I'm Batman! No! No, 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 Batman! Okay, 
and then my last question is, if you could say one thing to everyone in the world, what would you say? Oh, it's too cheesy to say, love Jesus. No? Yeah, that's your answer, love Jesus is a good one. Actually, I lied, I have one final one. Go on. What is something you hope to do in the next five to ten years? Oh, five to ten years. I mean, I hope I'd get married at some point. It's still not happening. Yeah, cool. I also want your mum to, to knit me one of those babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cute. I like what about me? I well, this is hopefully going to happen in the next year. I want to jump out of a plane. I want to skydive. Love that. I really want to, I'm really into experiences at the minute. I also have no clue what I'm going to be doing in five years. Like, yeah. So we'll see. Thank you for having a conversation with me. That's all right. I'm sorry to cover all of your I think doish. Do you want to say? And um, let's go get ready for a concert, baby. Bye. Bye. Bye.